performance is always like a big question. How can I make my migrations a little bit faster? How can I make sure that I'm getting the best out of the tool? Right. For instance, making sure that you're only migrating what you need, making sure that you have network structure between your source and destination, all that stuff. So I'm going to give you like three big tips. The first thing that I wanted to cover, this has been saving a lot of time to a lot of customers, is in the case of a file share to SharePoint migration, to from file share to OneDrive, to SharePoint, to Teams. The same logic applies because ShareGate has a small module within the tool itself that tries to look at internal metadata columns from a file share to see if there's any match from these columns to the ones on the library that you're migrating into. The thing is, in a lot of PDFs or Office files, depending on how they're formatted, there are situations where when Shariot asks a file to give us the list of all the metadata columns, we never get a response. So Shargit waits for a minute. And after a minute, we go, well, we couldn't get the extra metadata columns. So created by, modified by, and created date, modified date are still picked up, but it's the extra ones. If you're falling into that situation, if you look at your migration report and there's a bunch of warnings in regards of property extraction, you could be saving a lot of time if you turn it off. If you go under settings, you'll find that under migration, if you scroll down a little bit, you have file share property extraction. If it is turned on, just make sure to turn it off. And this usually will help you out. Of course, it doesn't mean that all migrations are going to be sped up by this, because if you don't have these columns to begin with, it's not going to change much. But in many cases, even if there's no warnings, there are additional steps that ShareGate might not require to do if you don't need that metadata. So if you're doing any migration from file share to ShipOn Online, make sure that if you don't need it, you turn off that feature. The second thing I wanted to show is, is that we often forget that there's a lot of versions to our files on your, our sources, right? No matter how you're doing your migration, once again, if you're doing just a library, just content, or even a whole site collection, like in this setup here, it would be the migration of an entirely new site collection. Let's say that I have 3,000 files in there, only 3,000 files, but each of them have like 100 versions. Well, ShareGate needs to hunt and migrate 3,000 files times 100 because we still have to recreate all this meta metadata on the destination. And the key thing here, I'm not going to say do not migrate content or, or your versions. I'm going to say limit to X amount of versions. So if you do not need more than 10, more than five, then limit to the amount of versions that you might be looking for, because you might not know that you have a list item that has like 300 versions. And just using that is going to skim a lot of operations that you do not need also, this is going to help your tenant or, or site, wherever you're migrating, to actually have a much more lean architecture, much easier to use down the road. That's the second thing. And the third thing I wanted to showcase a little bit for performance, often we actually get people that are asking to do the, uh, the migration of a whole site, and then they need to do the incremental of that said site. Do remember that ShareGate has to go through each and individual item in there. If you're in a situation where you know exactly which lists and libraries need to be addressed, meaning that you know that there are no libraries besides this one here, that would be ATE PowerShell data, that would actually need to be, you know, like do a migration with incremental approach. You can always go into copy structure and content, list and libraries, and select the libraries you want. And with a control click, you can select as many as you want, and then you can just go under options and make sure that you select instead of copy and replace, you can use copy if newer. In that case, it's going to do an incremental logic and that's going to be just those libraries. So if you have like a library that has 300,000 items that didn't move and you know that it move, you can use that logic. It's going to be saving you a lot of time for your second pass instead of having to do the whole site again. It is a little bit more manual work. So you're taking more time to set it up, but the, the trade-off is that you're going to be saving a bunch of time on the actual migration process.